Cinderace has one of the most underrated signature moves in Court Change. Court Change allows you to swap field effects with the opposing side, meaning if the opponent sets up entry hazards on our side, or even uses a light screen, Court Change moves the hazard to them, and the screens to us. However, I like to use it a little differently. I can set up a layer of toxic spikes on their side, and Court Change to bring them over to my side to poison my own Pokemon. Things like Guts Heracross and Toxic Boost Zangoose can now switch in and get poisoned immediately, freeing up their item slots by not having to status themselves. Ladies and gentlemen, what is happening? Welcome back to another Scarlet and Violet Wi-Fi battle. Today, I've got an extremely good one for you, back again with one of my most fun teams ever, and we're going up against a pretty scary looking rain team. Hey, if you enjoyed the videos, consider hitting that subscribe button. It really helps out the channel. I do appreciate the support. Let's go ahead and jump into the match. All right, so my opponent is gonna go ahead and lean off with the Grimmsnarl. Listen, all my homies hate Grimmsnarl. This crazy buff bastard always gets up the light screen and the reflect and it has the light clay and it's all around. Always ruining the momentum of a match with its prankster ability, but I decided to lead off with the Hisuian Electrode. I'm gonna go for a nice little Volt Switch here as I can pivot, get a, a decent amount of damage here with the Choice Specs. However, they do set up that Light Screen and the Volt Switch is gonna be a little bit of chip here as I can now figure out a better matchup. So, honestly, I'm a little bit scared for this game. I know that with the defensive support from the screens, plus the Swift Swimmer in the Dreadnought they have on their side, all they have to do is get Pelipper to set up the rain and they're not only going to be like the fastest mod on the field, but also can hit just extremely hard and be defensive. So I decided to go into the Glamora. Now, this thing is mainly here to get hit with a physical attack to set up the toxic spikes, which then coincides with Cinderace's court change to get the spikes on my side and then enable both Guts Heracross and the toxic boost Zangus with the Choice Scarf. However, I bring this thing in just to try to get some damage with the Sludge Wave as now they decide to go into the Uxi. And of course, I can't Sludge Wave my way out of a wet paper bag because they have both a light screen and a parting shot and Dennis says, I'm gonna get my ass out of here. So what I decided to do is, I'm gonna go directly into Cinderace here. Now, there's a couple different reasons. The main one is that they don't have a Reflect Up, so I can actually hit pretty hard with either a U-Turn or a Pyro Ball, but also I can actually Court Change that Light Screen they have on their side over to my side. So um, I do actually have a pretty solid answer to the Dual Screens Grimmsnarl in the Court Change, but they decide to go for the Yawn on the Switch, and I can't really risk this thing getting put to sleep because, like I said, this is a pretty pivotal Pokemon on the team for being able to get that Court Change off and then kind of, you know, finish off the rest of the strategy this team is built around. But, I, I go for that U-turn, get a bunch of damage as I switch to that bug type, but it actually ends up being weakness policy Uxie. So, homeboy with his big ass brain over here gets a nice little boost. And now I decide to bring in the Ambipom. So, I know I can outspeed this thing, and they're actually just gonna end up setting up the Stealth Rock here on the switch in. So, I come in for free. I'm honestly not concerned about them setting up the Stealth Rock on my side because, Again, I want to court change and shift some stuff around, and that just means that basically I can get it on their side, and they just set it up for me. So, I decide to go for the fake out here. I know that I can obviously do the big amount of chip damage and then finish it off with a double hit. However, back comes the Grimms now just to be a dick. If this guy slaps a girl's ass in the club, what are you doing? Me personally, I say he can have her, but I'm going to pimp slap him first, and I get a nice little critical hit, which is going to do a considerable amount of damage here, where I'm thinking... Potentially a double hit is a KO even through the reflect so they do go for that reflect the light screen still has a few turns left in it Sets up a fresh reflect and I go for that double hit unfortunately not quite enough uh, To take care of it. but now I've got myself in a position where I really feel like this thing's probably gonna go for that parting shot So what I can do is go for the u-turn now with the prankster ability Of course they always go first on non-attacking moves So they go for that parting shot and then that's gonna allow me to get a nice little pivot on whatever they decide to bring in so the, the slow pivot often works out in our favor here, and they decide to go into the Pelipper. So, Pelipper comes in, and they figure it is time. They've got the light screen, they've got the reflect up, and they're ready to get some, some drizzle action. So, makes it rain on these hoes, I go for that U-turn, do essentially nothing. But what it does do is opens up a free matchup. And while the light screen is still around, I in fact have the greatest ball of wooden electricity on this side of the Mississippi, and that is going to be the Choice Specs. Hisuian Electrode, so I'm thinking either they switch out here and something takes a decent bit of damage from a Thunderbolt, or they decide to stay in uh, and I'm able to just grab a kill through that light screen. So, honestly, not a lot of their team wants to switch into the Electrode. Mostly because you switch into it, you have to take two attacks because I'm so fast. I go for that Thunderbolt, it is going to take care of the Pelipper, and that is actually great news. Now, the good news is Pelipper no longer has the ability to set up the rain, and the bad news is the rain is up with that Damp Rock, it's going to stay around for like seven more turns. So. Now we have to deal with the monster that is Dreadnought. So this thing comes in here, it's gonna be sitting behind a Reflect and nearly the maximum amount of rain turns. Honestly, there's nothing more scary than a Swift Swimmer in the rain. This thing has the doubled speed and the ability to set up with the Shell Smash. So what I decided to do is I'm gonna save 
uh, the Electrode for later. Potentially, if I can get the rain out of here, I can then outspeed. Uh, but I decide to go into the Glamora here. The plan is, I know that they're going to Shell Smash. There's pretty much no avoiding what this thing is going to do here, as they also commit their Terra. Uh, which is to be expected, Electrode had a decent matchup there if they, you know, go for the Shell Smash and they don't Terra. So, they put a nice little pretty flower on his head and it turned into the Grass type here, as, of course, they do go for that Shell Smash. So... With this thing speed doubled plus that Shell Smash, it's going to be extremely fast and hits so hard, especially in the rain. Uh, with the Liquidation and the Rain Boost, it's going to basically be able to kill like everything. And yeah, this is it, it kind of unavoidable at this point with a rain team like this. You kind of just have to deal with it. And I find myself in a pretty tough position here. They also have the White Herb to get rid of the Defense Drop from the Shell Smash. And all I can do at this point is essentially let them knock me out with Liquidation. The good news is I can stick to my main plan, which is... They have to hit Glamora with a physical attack here. It is going to activate my Toxic Debris and sets up a layer of Toxic Spikes over there. Now, if I can potentially be able to get a Court Change uh, with the Cinderace, I can bring those over to my side, activate the Zangoose with its Toxic Boost ability plus the Choice Scarf, and be in the money. But first, I have to get through and at least figure out a way <laughs> to, to break through the Sweeper that is Dreadnought. So, I decide to go into the Amber Palm. I'm going to go for a Fake Out, essentially do like a little bit of damage, but more importantly, stall out one of the Turns of Rain. Um, and that puts me in a point where I essentially just have to let the Amber Palm go down here. It's going to outspeed me, everything kills, and Amber Palm uh, was at least able to burn a turn of the rain. But yeah, he's, the monkey is going to go down, and he's going down wet. So, I've got a dead wet monkey in my pocket, but I also have a ball here. I'm going to bring in the Hisuian Electrode. Now what this is going to do is actually going to force them to go for uh, whatever their alternate move is, opposed to the Liquidation. Knowing that they can't probably knock me out with that Liquidation, I think boosted in the rain, it probably is really close to killing. It probably does about 90% to me, but they go for the head smash here and thank God they actually end up missing, which is amazing because I can now fire off the old laser at him, do some pretty considerable chip damage, but more importantly, we stalled out one more turn of rain. And that actually puts us in a spot where I believe at this point it has one more turn of rain left. And all I have to do at this point is essentially let one more Pokemon go down and then I have a chance for this late game. So. I decide to switch into the Heracross here. I figure if there's anything that needs to go down, it's probably Heracross. Uh, they do have a Tornadus in the back, and Heracross just does not have the value needed here. So I decide to switch into this thing. They do finish me off uh, with, with a Liquidation here. And down goes the Heracross, but also down goes the Rain. So shit is drying up out here, and our chances just got a whole lot better. I know exactly what I need to do, and it's time to just pull it off. So. The rain goes away, thank god. Granny in the back is like, finally, it's not so moist out here. I decide to go into the Cinderace because even with this thing Shell Smash boost, I should still be faster naturally as I'm just a maxed out speed Cinderace here. And my goal is to go for this Court Change. I do outspeed, I get the Court Change off. So what that does is, it's gonna pull the old Switcheroony on him. Essentially, I bring the Toxic Spikes over to my side, the Stealth Rock over to his side. And while that seems like a super strange play just to sacrifice the Cinderace to get the Court Change off, it actually puts me in a win condition here to where now our Choice Scarf Zangoose can now get itself a poison and be fast enough to hopefully sweep the rest of the game. So I decide to go into the Electrode first. It's kind of just my safest play at this point because I know that I can outspeed and a Specs T-Bolt should be, uh, if not just really close to knocking this thing out. So I bring in the old Triangle and I'm just going to go for that T-Bolt. Not a lot, again, wants to switch into this thing or has enough speed. So I go for that T-Bolt, does take care of the Dreadnought and that is a huge threat out of the way and uh, we love to see it. So down goes the Dreadnought. Now they're now going to be down to four Pokemon left and we've got some pretty considerable chip on a few of them. So I, I am poisoned here. That is the downside to bringing the spikes over to my side is I do have to deal with the poison on Mons that don't benefit from it, but uh, they're going to end up going into the Uxie here. This thing takes some Stealth Rock damage. It's their own Stealth Rock we brought over there. Uh, and luckily it's, it's down to the point where easily a Thunderbolt should be able to knock it out. So down goes the Uxie. Electrode is absolutely popping off over here. And now we're down to three Pokemon left. So they have the Grimmsnarl, a Hisuian Arcanine, and a Tornadus. But I do have one more turn of the poison left in me. And now I know that they can switch into the Grimmsnarl. However, this thing has been chipped to the point where their own Stealth Rock with the Court Change is going to be able to take care of it. Which is actually huge because that stops this thing from being able to set up a nice little Prankster Reflect for the Zangus in the back. Uh, and it pretty much is all going to come down to this. So in comes the Hisuian Arcanine. And since that thing died immediately... Uh, I actually did not take a turn of the poison damage, and we're going to see what this thing wants to do here. I just go for the Thunderbolt, of course. I'm obviously just specced into the T-Bolt here, and they do carry the Extreme Speed, which is going to take care of the Electrode, but what it's also going to do is give him a little bit of Aftermath. You touch the ball, you get some Aftermath, 
Uh, and that's going to put this thing in easy range to where Zangoose can take care of it. So, all I have to do at this point is bring in the Zangoose, let our own Toxic Spikes do its thing, which frees up our item slot not having to have the Toxic Orb to poison itself. I can now have Choice Scarf Zangoose, who should be fast enough uh, to hopefully finish off the game here for us. We have no business uh, being faster than this thing or a Tornadus, but... Uh, with that Scarf, we've got the Poison. I'm going to go for that Terra Normal just to maximize as much damage as possible from this Zangoose. Um, and with that Toxic Boost, this thing, no one is living a facade from this thing. I, I can assure you that. So, I put the Diamond on my head. We are iced out. Uh, and it comes down to basically the very end of the match to where we can hopefully get the Zangoose to do exactly what it's designed to do. I go for that facade. And listen, Zangoose does not care if you resist. I've got the boosted stab from the Terra. I have an extremely powerful facade with the Toxic Boost, um, and that is definitely going to take care of the Arcanine. So, their final Pokemon is going to be the Tornadus. And there could not be a better position for this Zangoose to pop off, because this is exactly what we want, is to be able to uh, essentially just Oko this thing, them not expecting us to outspeed. Uh, because again, Zangoose ordinarily isn't able to be this fast, but we are able to get that Choice Scarf, and since we got our own Toxic Spikes working for us, a facade is going to be able to take care of it, and that is going to clean up the rest of the game. So, the stars really aligned for us on this one, but honestly, Court Change is the real MVP. Being able to use it in an unconventional way, being able to toxic our own guy, uh, did definitely pay off. And uh, thank you guys very much for watching. I had a lot of fun with this one. This team is a little bit ridiculous, but hey, that's what it's all about. If you enjoyed, make sure to leave a like on the video. The support is greatly appreciated, and I'll catch you next time. Peace out.